Why does it seem like the music and movies from the 60s were better than the pop Marvel drivel that we have today? Survival bias. We remember the good stuff from the 60s, and we have forgotten about all the dreck. <laughs> and brother, there was some dreck. But this is one of the reasons that I like to watch old movies. The ones that have survived, the ones that people still talk about, the ones that people care enough about to save, uh, those are pretty good. Or at least they're interesting. This is one such movie from the 60s. Uh, it might not be a great work of art, but it does have a lot of beautiful naked people, and that's always interesting. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at All the Sins of Sodom from 1968. This film comes to us from renowned film auteur Joseph W. Sarno. Uh, there were a few directors in the 60s exploitation scene that achieved some level of notoriety outside of the 60s exploitation scene, and he was one. Uh, this film is considered by many to be Sarno's best, and I gotta say, from the handful of Sarno films that I've seen, yeah, it's probably my favorite one. So, let's check it out. We open on a photographer photographing. F f photo photographing. We open on a photographer and his model. These are two of our main characters. Henning, the photographer, he really only cares about his photos, uh, but plenty of the models that drop by, including this one, find it easy to care for him. Or at least to fall into bed with him. The model here is Leslie, and she's about to fall in love with Henning. And Henning, for his part, seems to be falling for her too. He thinks she's got a seductive face, and he spends a lot of time photographing her, trying to capture that perfect moment of seduction. His agent sends by a new girl that she thinks might also have this seductive face that he's looking for. Uh, this is Joyce, played by Sue Acker. She was in a number of sexploitation films back in the 60s. She was in Confessions of a Psycho Cat, for example, which I covered a few weeks back, but I don't think I showed any of her scenes from that movie in my review, uh, because I don't think she ever had any clothes on in that film. <laughs> don't blame me, I just work here. Anyway, she sometimes wears clothes in this movie, so we should be fine. Here, in All the Sins of Sodom, she's homeless, so Henning lets her crash at the studio. No strings attached, uh, he's not a complete degenerate. Staying at the studio gives Joyce access to Henning's models. Uh, Henning might not be a complete degenerate, but Joyce is. She convinces the first model she runs across to say the Sesame Street number of the day. Uh, uh, uh. Eventually, Henning gets the great idea to use Joyce to try to inspire Leslie to have that face of seduction. And it works pretty well. Henning and Leslie celebrate with an activity that I can't show you, and Joyce goes off to her part of the studio to celebrate with an activity that I can't show you, but uh, I can let you listen to. <laughs> you guessed it, she's using an ultrasonic cleaner to knock the dust off her pearl. So there's going to be some drama coming up. Henning isn't exactly faithful to Leslie, and uh, but Leslie doesn't seem to mind. Uh, Joyce is happy to play with both of them, even at the same time. Uh, but ultimately, she's not everything she says she is. And that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. <laughs> Dear Lord, Sue Ackers is smoking hot. Wait, no, I mean, like, um, she's a well-written, strong female character with, like, a character arc and stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. On a more serious note, the cinematography here is excellent. Lots of cool shots that play with foreground elements and depth of field and really interesting angles and compositions. It looks pretty cool most of the way through. Obviously, there's not a lot I can show you, but hopefully if these images show you what I mean. And if you're looking for some 60s erotica, you could do a lot worse than this film. This film delivers the goods pretty well. We've got some Sesame Street girls, a number of missionaries, uh, some ultrasonic pearl cleaning. For the late 60s, not too bad. Not too bad at all. But I wouldn't say the movie is perfect. Like a tiny hottie cleaning her jewelry, it has some shortcomings. Well, the biggest flaw in this film is probably the audio. Uh, lots of pops and hisses and missing seconds. It's pretty bad. How did you like working with these two girls? Who can remember? They were last week. 
I mean, audio is a typical problem of low-budget 60s exploitation films. In fact, some of them didn't film with audio at all. They just added it in later. Uh, this film's not like that, uh, but it's still pretty bad. And I know I said the cinematography is good, and it is, uh, but there are times when things are not focused very well. I mean, like, look at this shot, for example. Uh, they're out of focus back there in the hallway. And then she steps into the focus plane at the end here. And I don't know why they didn't just pull focus as she walked into the foreground. Or they could have stopped down the aperture so that things in the background were sharper. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get too technical. I mean, especially since I don't know what kind of camera or lens setup they were using and there might have been some restrictions here. But still, there are a number of times throughout the film where the focus plane isn't exactly in the right spot or the depth of field is too shallow for how the scene is blocked out. It can be a little bit distracting if you know what any of those things are, uh, if you don't know anything about apertures or focus planes or depth of field, it probably won't bother you. Lucky you. Acting wise here, things are kind of uneven. Um, the Leslie character, she does great. She's got some pretty good range from, you know, being like happy and being a little nervous to being turned on. Yeah, she's fine. Henning is sort of less fine. He does this sort of obsessed, committed photographer pretty well, but then at other times you can tell he doesn't have a whole lot of emotional range to his acting ability. Overall, it's kind of just middle of the road as far as acting goes. Regardless, if you like 60s exploitation and you haven't seen this one, check it out. It's pretty solid. In a lot of 60s exploitation, you can tell the cast is having a lot of fun, which is a big reason I like them. All the Sins of Sodom is more serious than a Maura or a Wishman or a Finlay film, uh, but it works. Uh, Sarno managed to do serious pretty well. Mm -hmm.